putting on a program like this is not an inexpensive exercise. In fact, it's quite expensive to, to put on a program like this. Um, and I know that um, over the last six months, many of the um, brothers from, from Guyana have been working quite hard to be able to get the money together to be able to, to come to this program. And, and this is quite remarkable. It shows the, the extent that you wish to commit yourself, how important you feel it is. Um, so it is, it is quite an expensive venture. But it's something, if it is that you truly believe in, something that you will find the, the will and the way and the means to be able to get it done. And that's important for us. Um, it's also important because to organize a program, it also means that you have to know how it is, how it is that you're going to get the type of funds and the type of money that you need and the type of resources that you require. At the same time, and if it is that you don't have the resources, or what can you do, what alternatives can you make that, that you can put into place to ensure that, that you get what it is that you require. So, as some of you are asking, I mean, how, how, how do you do this? How did we do this, this particular program? And really, apart from the conceptualization and the planning, the planning of this particular one has taken us almost the entire six months. The plan since January to July, we have been planning this for the last six months, and it has taken a long time just to be able to plan and conceptualize topics, to, con um, to conceptualize exactly what we want, um, what we hope to achieve. All of those things, um, it takes time to do it. Thinking about the logistics of where the, the program is going to be held. Um, and these are important things, elements I'm talking about. The reason why is because the hope is that you will go on to be able to organize programs like these. The idea is that not for a particular individual to continue doing something, but it's to empower others to do the same. So that if you had to do it, how would you do it? Where would you start from? When you have to think about the resources, I will come to our projects because some of our projects fail because you came up with a budget, and then realized that, hold on, it, it can't work because there's no way I can find the type of resources required to, to be able to get the, the project off the ground. So to give you simple things, like you have to find places. You have to think about accommodation. You have to think about the logistics. We, we came, myself and, and Munish were here, and you know we, we planned carefully how we were doing simple things like booklets, simple things like, for instance, how to organize this hall, you know, aesthetically for the purposes of teaching, what are the best types of tables to use, should we go with rectangular tables, should we go with, with wrong tables. Last time we, we experimented and we used the horseshoe approach um, to, to learning, and that seemed to work quite well. But this time we specifically chose these wrong tables, and the reason being is that we feel that we are moving from simply giving didactic lectures and having more group discussions. So this is why you are in, in, in small groups, in small tables. And all of that takes a lot of planning and thinking about what it is that you want to achieve. So these are lessons that you can learn when you have to organize your own activities, and many of you will. Many of you will be put into situations where you would have to organize something in your mosque, something at a regional level or something at a national level or perhaps at an international level. And it's the same core, core, core skills that if properly learned, then you can utilize those to be able to organize any, any type of, of activity. To give you an example, I mean, I, I don't just organize things like these. But I organize a lot of international conferences as well. And it's the same skills that you use. And where did I learn it from? I learned it from some of the people who taught me. I remember many years ago, about 10 years ago, I was telling one of the brothers, I organized a, a zero convention, a conference in, in, um, in England, in Leicester. And we, we had to be clear of what we wanted to do. And what we wanted is to be able to go beyond not just giving lectures about the Syro, when the prophet was born, when he died, what, what were the events, but it was much more than that. 
So the person who was, I was planning with was Abdul Wahid Hamid. He's from Trinidad, but he is, is quite famous and he's a national author and so on. And then he said, look, I want to ensure that people have become critical thinkers at the same time of learning and understanding the zero. So the prerequisite for anyone who wants to come on this program that we're organizing is that you must read a book on zero and do a critical analysis and present for half an hour. So we selected 35 books, all of the books that we can put our hands on in English on the zero, and everybody who wanted to attend had to, was assigned a particular text, had to read a text, had to do a presentation for half an hour with a critical analysis to come on to the program. So the program was comprised of that plus other sessions and so on that we had on thematic approaches. But what was even more interesting when it came to arranging the hall is the care in which he took. I mean, this is somebody who is, you know, over 75. But at almost midnight, when we arrived at the venue, thinking that and the brothers said, oh, we'll fix the hall next morning, he said no. And he went, and I, I went with him, and he said, look, this is the way I want it. He looked at the room, and he said, look, I want this table here, I want this chair here, I want people to be able to, be able to look like this, to interact like this. Ensuring that by the time that, that um, you know, even though it was past midnight, that every single thing, up to the, where the chairs are, where the tables are, where everything is, every single thing was put into place. And that was a big learning lesson. And those are the lessons, but you can only learn those lessons if you are there, you being part of, of it. And this is why it is so important that if you are given opportunities to, to be involved in planning something, or to be, or, or people ask you to, you know, to volunteer for things. This is where you begin to learn the skills. You can only learn so much from reading or listening to a lecture, but when you actually have to do things physically, then you begin to know what needs to be done, how, how. So, so I said this program costs a lot. So how did we manage to raise the money and, 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 and get the funds? So our Chinese brothers and sisters helped. They're not Muslims, but they helped. So we got things. These things that you see in front of you, they're all from China. They're all from China. They cost very, very little. They, they look good, and, they, and it, it looks professional, but we got them from China, very, very cheap, on eBay. These things that you see here, getting this, that's the simple wallet to fit the card in that you had the last time, is a little bit expensive. So how do we make it even less expensive, but still looks professional? So what we did is that we took a simple piece of cardboard. Then we had the name and everything else on it. And then we printed it out. And then I laminated the sheets and then cut them out individually. Then I bought a special puncher, a special metal puncher that punches this oval shaped hole that you have there. Because if it is that I were to buy this, it, it would be expensive. So now I have an, a puncher that will be able to punch and give me that exact hole that I require. Then you get something. And this is the way, so when you, think, when you start thinking about how you're going to get things done, then you have to think about how it is, can I save? What is it that can I do? X person I know I can approach him for something, but how much should I ask him for? Maybe he can give me 10 tea bags, or this one can give me a bottle of, of hot chocolate, or this one can give me something. And sooner or later, then you realize that, yes, you can get the type of resources that you need. And this is what you need when you live in a, in, in a country like ours. One of the first things a lot of people say is that we don't have any resources. We don't have any money to run our activities. In Trinidad, I have been running activities for, for the last 30 years, 35 years now. And I have never come across a situation where I've had to say, well, money is an issue. Because we've always found a way to be able to make do. Asim would, would tell you, even to the juice, I can take, I can feed any amount of people with just a small amount of juice. Just add more water to it. <laughs> okay? And this is the, and it goes around. It goes around. And we've done it over the years. But I want each one of you here, and I know the brothers, um, 
uh, especially from, from, uh, from Guyana, are well versed in this. And they have gone through difficult times in times of recession. But you here in Trinidad as well, you can do things. It doesn't take a lot to get things done. You have things like the internet, you have the media, you have so many things that you can get and you can do things. If anything, I hope at the end of this program, inshallah, that you will have that motivation and you will have some of the skills to, to tell yourself and become innovative to be able to get things done. You can get things done if it is that you try. Or we need to do it. Because whenever you, whenever you, you plan an activity, as we are planning this activity now and as we are executing this activity, the person who learns the most are you. Brother Hassan will tell you that the one who will learn the most from his presentations will be him. Because of the months and, and the, the, the long hours that he's taken in, in preparing these, the, these talks, the research that goes in, this is, what, this is where you begin to learn. In a sense, learning on the job. And this is, this is what we need, inshallah. So, I want us to remind us about this, this quotation from Thomas Jefferson. And he said that, may I never get too busy in my own affairs that I fail to respond to the needs of others with kindness and compassion. And if anything, this is what this program is about. It is about not us becoming selfish. As I said in my khutbah on Friday, it is about us moving from the realm of being selfish and becoming selfless. Finding ourselves so in 